good morning. Uh, Jonathan Bain here, and uh, I was going to just write you an, an, like an email e explaining the, the way that I felt about your novel, but I figured, screw it. I don't really feel like writing this morning, and might as well babble like an idiot in front of a camera. That and, <clears throat> that, and it's not even 9 o'clock in the morning, and I haven't slept last night, so, um, so, how are you? Hopefully, this finds you doing well, and, um, so let's get to your novel. Uh, the first thing, I'm gonna get the, well, that's not even really negative, I'm gonna get the neutral comments out of the way, uh, just so you can really kind of catch where I was at this point. The first few pages and I have a feeling this this was deliberate uh, because you're kind of introducing people into a world they don't really quite understand obviously with just looking at the cover um, the first few pages were a little hard to follow just because you know, I'm grasping for any kind of information to kind of see where these characters are and uh, that's really that's really the only even semi-negative thing I have to say is that the, the first three pages, the first three, four pages, roughly, um, I had to reread it a few times to realize what was going on. Um, but once I finally did figure, okay, here we go, this, you know, this poke of post-apocalyptic, that type of thing. Which, by the way, well done for not using zombies. <laughs> I was fully expecting zombies to come out of every corner. Probably because my wife has been doing nothing but watching Walking Dead. Um, but anyway. But uh, the one thing... So that's the only negative thing. Uh, I will say right off the bat, I fucking enjoyed it. I really, really enjoyed it. I was a little pissed off when I came to the end because, like I said, I thought... Uh, my wife ended up deleting the email because we share the same email uh, for a few... for a very select few things. <coughs> And, uh, so she deleted that email for reasons I don't quite understand. And I was able to, to find it again. But I thought that you had only put, that you, like, had a bunch of files there. And, like, the first three, uh, the first three chapters were one file, the second, the next three chapters were another, and so on and so forth. So I was stressing. But the reason I was pissed off was because, it's like, the very last thing is that, and then they were home. And I'm like, that's not it, is it? I was like, I don't fucking know what happens you know, next, it's, um, but then I read the rest of the email and got your message this morning, and it's like, okay, so I'm just really tired, but, um, so I reread it again and again, just because I, I really wanted to remember these characters, you know, I, I never really remember names, but, uh, you know, I remember more situations and the mannerisms of the character. The one thing that I will absolutely applaud you on is your pacing. Uh, a lot of people, when they're just trying to get you into the thick of things, you know, they uh, they tend to stuff a hundred pounds of information into a ten-pound bag within the first few pages, and it tends to get a bit it tends to get a bit too much. Um, I thought that you were introducing the world at the appropriate pace. Again, the first three pages, it, it, it seemed it seemed a little scattered, but I have, a, I have a feeling, and you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but it seemed like the confusion of the first three pages was absolutely deliberate, just to give you that experience of, like, literary vertigo, you know what I mean? Um, but the one, uh, and, and that's as far as, like, mechanically, the prose, you know, oh, I thought the pacing was really, really good. Um, in terms of the story itself, how did it make me feel was one of the questions that you wanted deliberately answered, specifically in your preface and in the, uh, the email you sent. It made me feel really anxious, you know. Uh, it made me feel really anxious for a few reasons. Number one, you inserted the kid element into it. And as the father of a daughter... It was unnerving, which is good. You know, I like that. I, I I like being being challenged on my normal, you know, paternal instincts. It's it's definitely 
that makes the novel less a work of fiction and more uh, an almost psychological experience, which I, I love. I fucking loved it. It was, it was awesome. Um, although, at the rate that my daughter talks, I'm not sure she'd be the perfect company for a post-apocalyptic adventure. I'm just, just throwing that out there. And I know eventually she's going to see this video and be like, okay, Dad, you're a dick. That's true, honey. I love you, but... You, you, you know, we just talked about pacing two minutes ago. Learn something. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, that was a joke, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but I... The other part of that was that just about everything within uh, chapters 2 and 3, whether there was action going on or not, really brought home the idea of having familiar surroundings being unfamiliar, and that sense of peril, you know, that you don't find in places that you've been time and time again. You know, it's it's going to sleep, waking up, and finding out that the world is not the world that you remember, you know. And I, I really... It's kind of interesting, because I, I kind of had something very similar happen to me. I mean, you know, not in a post-apocalyptic type setting, I mean. But... Um, about ten years ago, I moved to Florida to ostensibly to live, and that had some things happen that made me actually come back up north, and I did that, and this was about ten, twelve years ago. Well, my wife and I and my daughter went down uh, about a year ago to try the same exact thing, and it was interesting because before... And it may just begin. It may just have been because I was in my twenties and full of piss and vinegar. Uh, but when I went down there, um, I mean, granted, a lot of the things geographically had changed. You know, they they uh, made some highways bigger and stuff like that. But the character of the place changed. You know, the Tampa Bay area really lost a lot of its warmth and lost a lot of its um, uh, its comfort I suppose which made just about everything within uh, that I tried to experience down there take on this very sinister quality you know almost almost dangerous not quite danger but just like there was danger lurking around every corner and as you're walking down the street it's kind of eyeing you you know what I mean and that's the feeling that I got with your novel, in terms of uh, experiencing the same things that you've experienced before, but just devoid of people and with this sense of Im Im impending danger around you. And ultimately, within the first three chapters, that danger was realized when you realize, okay, great, no more people. Eh, I could kind of deal with that. But with no more people comes these you know, the lack of solidarity that comes with having more people around you in a setting where, by definition, you all have to stick together. And then the dogs came. <laughs> and it's like, you know, like the totality of, of the, the totality of not having, it and having anyone around hit me right before the dogs ended up get, being sicked on the, on, on the characters. And right before the dogs came, I'm like, wow, they are completely, utterly alone. You know, at least for these first three... Shit, there's fucking dogs now? Run. <laughs> you know. And, uh... Like I said, the only thing that really, really irritated me at, was at the very end... Because I want to know more. And I hope you let me read more. When... You know, when you get along to... Releasing it, or, what, or whatever your process is. I really... I'm looking forward to, to reading it. But in terms of, would you spend 10 to 15 bucks? Yeah. Yeah, I would. I would, personally. I'm a little bit biased, because when I get bored, I will read anything. But, the fact of the matter is, the first three chapters, I've read three times already. You know, three times? Oh, excuse me, three times yesterday. <laughs> you know. <clears throat> but anyway, that's all I got for you. Uh, 
if you want to talk about it some more, let me know. And uh, I look forward to reading the rest of it. Take care, man.